Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So today I was thinking about the first time that I saw images on the internet from Dolly. Thinking about, you know, oh, like what is this open AI thing? Dolly looks cool, but I wonder if it's really that good. And I remember like the, the first sort of uh, open source implementation on Hugging Face that would give you these horrifically mangled, blurry, you know, 200 by 200 pixel images that were a, a far cry and kind of a joke relative to even Dolly. And thinking that, you know, oh, well, there's, you know, this is so advanced that the, the math going on here, that there's no way I'll ever be able to run this on a single GPU without access to, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of uh, compute credits. Then I remember a few months later having Stable Diffusion and running it on my 3090 and then realizing, huh, like this is actually pretty good. You know, it's harder, it's different. It's a different workflow per se. The big shift for me in terms of when I was just getting really interested uh, as an engineer in generative AI was when Llama leaked and the idea that uh, these large language models were only doable with ChatGPT. And there are still a few areas where you know people would say, oh, there's no way you'll ever do that locally. And I think one of those really for me is text to video. So of course, you know, there are lots of crazy papers from Google with like Imogen and Meta. They both had pretty interesting early ideas of text to video and models that actually worked. The closest we got on the open source side are things you could run in automatic 11.11 just as a plugin were things like Deforum. And with Deforum, we were introduced to the idea of using image to image transitions to make text to video, which was kind of cool. Then eventually Runway ML released uh, Gen 1 and later Gen 2, which gave us the first real tool that would let you um, put in like a pretty crazy prompt and then get a incredibly detailed, well composed video out. It's expensive, it's kind of hit or miss, but for the time being, it was just seen as the best way of doing that. It made anything coming out of Deforum look like kind of a a cute animated GIF that might loop or do some interesting things. However, with all the progress going on, I found something on Twitter today that I just think is incredibly cool. And of course, it's in its early stages. It's not necessarily as good at everything that uh, Runway ML Gen 1 or Gen 2 models can do. However, um, this is just really cool. It's also cool because it's a number of people on Twitter who kind of got together to work on this. And it's an amalgamation of a lot of existing tools that we know work that creates some pretty incredible results. And what's crazy is there's really not a lot of buzz around this right now. And, and it's wild because this, the results look really good. Sure, they're kind of small and they're not 20 second to a minute long video, but they look really, really cool. If you haven't checked them out, uh, there are two people on Twitter I want you to follow. Kamen Duru is one of them. He's an engineer. The other is Sir Spencer, Spencer Sterling who's another engineer that's worked on this project. This project is called Zeroscope, and this is Zeroscope V2. They've been working on this for a while, and basically what this is is a really clever reapplication of image-to-image -image transitions that gets you, in conjunction with some upscaling and a fine-tuned model, results that look like something that would come out of Runway Gen 1. So you can give it a prompt, and it gives you a video back. You only get a few seconds right now, and there are some reasons for that but let's get into it. I initially saw this because I follow Kim and Drew. He's done a bunch of other really cool infrastructure work. There are a number of things to mention here. So text to video is one of them, model scope is the other, and then there are a few other bits that really make this work. But initially now, let's just look at what they have here. So imagining prompts here, the idea here is showing an initial image prompt and then how that image was actually turned into video or how it was animated. And this is something you could think of as just establishing subject. So, you know, we have a dinosaur on a rock, or we have a shark in the water. You can also pass images into this to animate them. They're pretty cool. I mean, this clearly can tell that this is a car moving through a certain environment. Uh, this is clearly a shark kind of doodling around in the ocean. And here we have a really interesting, the dinosaur one is the most interesting to me because it's able to discern foreground, background, and depth of field and understanding that the dinosaur is a subject, that there are people on bikes in the background on this path, which from the image, you can't really even tell it's a path. And then there's this cool tree that actually I think might not have even been really set as a tree. And then the fish in water appears is interesting because there's sort of this like waterfall pattern on top of it. Now, the other one that I saw, there, there aren't a ton of examples. I'm gonna try this after I finish making this video and I'll post some shorts as to what I get. This is the first video that I saw. So this is you know a car driving on the highway in a cyberpunk city. I think this is also cool because it, it gives you a great depth of field. It I initially saw this and was like, oh great, it's, 
it's another artist posting runway mail videos and claiming they're selling them to people who are making ads. But I think this is really cool. So let's jump into kind of how this works. So again, the resolution is pretty low. So the resolution right now is about 500 by 250 pixels, which is basically optimized to be 69. And one part of this process was also basically just meant to create a 69 video, which curiously was one of the big challenges that runway ML with Gen 1 initially got over. Ironically, one of the early limitations of a lot of um, diffusion models was that they could only make square pictures, they couldn't make 69 pictures. Roughly the way this works, uh, so this is zero scope V2. Uh, I'll link to the hugging space in the description and uh, all of their models are here. Um, so the big ones are this, this path file and this bin file which will let you use them in automatic 11.11. That's how their flow works. Uh, this is not a tutorial, so I'm just going over kind of what this is and why it works. So uh, they're big on this being uh, a watermark-free model scope-based video model optimized for producing high-quality 16.9 compositions and smooth video output. Uh, the, the whole point being that um, the deform animations are not really smooth. So the big innovative part of this model is that this model was trained using about 10,000 clips and 30,000 tagged frames at 30 frames, so which basically means that all these videos are going to be of 30 frames in length, which is why you get 30 by 448 by 256, which is the resolution. So there is a model underpinning all of this that was tagged on clips and then tagged frames of the clips. So the interpolation and the inference that's making these videos is saying, looking at a prompt and then looking at frame to frame in that video, what is actually going on. So that, that's where kind of the, the sauce of this is kind of coming into play. So they say zero scope V2 is specifically designed for upscaling with POTAT1 using vid to vid in the 11 11 text to video extension by Kabu Shua. Leveraging this model as a preliminary step allows for superior overall compositions at higher resolutions in POTAT 1, permitting faster exploration in 448 by 256 before transitioning to a high resolution render. And they show sort of a higher resolution render. So this is what they consider as a higher resolution render. And this is the highest resolution I've seen things so far. And yeah, so there are a few key bits here. So there's the actual model scope model, zero scope V2. Then there's the upscaler, which is POTAT V1. This is an existing project that, um, again, Kamenduru was working on. And basically, this was one of the very first open source text to video models. Of course, you know, there are varying quality of output with this. So this is an example. So again, so it was a slight departure from the weird image to image kind of trippy looking uh, outputs of Deform. Uh, it gave a bit more of a notion of what was subject and what was foreground and background, which is what makes um, Runway ML's models so cool. Again, POTAT 2 is yet to be released and hopefully it'll make this cooler. Upscaling is done with POTAT, which is also um, a video to video model in a way. vid to vid is basically a plugin for Automatic 11.11 which is this plugin here that you can use. This gives a lot of insight into what is actually happening at a very low level. These are very simple videos, but they show kind of what's going on here in terms of um, the clip and upscaling. These are all building on this, right? So Potent 1 is adding the ability to upscale. Zero Scope V2 model is actually plugged into this automatic 11.11 text to video extension. So basically they're, they're taking out the core inference block and putting in their own, which again was trained on 10,000 clips and all these frames that have been tagged. And that's how they're getting to this output. And this video here with the car, I think was, yeah, it was upscaled to 1152 by 640 using POTAT1. The, the rough way you do this, as I said, is you install this text to video extension for automatic 11.11. You um, bring in zero scope and their model files, and then you simply uh, dump them into the model scope directory, and you're off to the races. I'm gonna try this on my remote box, and it's not perfect, right? So the one thing with open source stuff is it's obviously going to be harder than just uh, spinning up Runway ML Gen 1 and getting videos out. So I've linked to all of the contributors in the, in the description below. Um, I just thought this was incredibly cool. It's something that wasn't getting enough attention uh, as it was posted, you know, just a few hours ago. And uh, yeah, I think the idea that um, VC-backed companies will be making the most interesting stuff in generative AI is not really accurate. Uh, this is something that's come up just in the last few months. And again, you know, as a huge advocate of the open source side of generative AI, I think we're going to continually be surprised with how good open source is relative to these uh, first party kind of white glove models like Midjourney and Runway ML Gen 1. 
So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.